Dr. Cook here. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about weather. Weather is something that can definitely impact your military operations. You can just see some of these images here uh, from various points in time, whether it's sandstorms pinning your soldiers down or having to cross the Delaware, pushing floating ice out of the way to make your crossing, or just imagine trudging through snow to get up a hill. Right, when we talk about weather and combat operations, there are five military aspects of weather to consider in our analysis. First one is wind, precipitation, that's rain, snow, anything that falls out of the sky, the cloud cover, the temperature and the humidity, and the visibility. Okay, now what I want you to do is get a piece of paper out and just write down these couple of things, the wind, the precipitation, the cloud cover, the temperature and the humidity, uh, the visibility. Um, we'll get more into that when we talk about light effects in the next video. But at least lay those out. And now I want you to do a thinking exercise. How might these aspects of weather impact a combat operation? So go ahead, take a brief pause in the video, jot some notes down, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Ready? Hit pause. Okay, back with your notes. Good. Uh, so let's talk through them. Let's talk about wind effects first. Um, you know, with enough speed, the wind can kick up dust and smoke, and that can uh, really create visibility problems for you, it can create breathing problems. It can affect your fields of fire if you can't see anything. Um, <clears throat> High winds are going to shut down air traffic in the area, so you won't be able to get rotary wing or you won't be able to get fixed wing uh, close air support. Could impact your drones, so that can happen very easily. Um, how close it is to the ground where the wind layers are. So wind is actually different if we go high enough up into the atmosphere, and that can affect some of the aircraft and maybe not you on the ground. As you come back down, uh, that can start blowing up things like dust, um, it can impact your points of aim if it's uh, high enough velocity wind. Um, it can also affect stability on vehicles. If you've got some of these higher mounted vehicles like an Expando van for a TOC, uh, it's a wheeled vehicle, we pop the sides out on, they're pretty high centered. Um, you know, the wind can really make those things rock and potentially blow them over. Uh, radio antennas can be a problem and that then impacts your comm platforms. Um, and uh, yeah, and just to give you some background, I mean, I've been in windstorms that popped up and we were hiding behind our Humvee just trying to find something with enough to block us because we didn't have canvas tops. And uh, it actually started pushing the Humvee, not in the direction the wheels were rolling, but against the wheels in uh, kind of, we were behind the door and it was pushing it away, you know, towards us. Um, I've also seen sandstorms that popped up and just took out an entire uh, fob kind of area, not, not, don't think fobs like Iraq that have been there for five years think something we went in and set up the day before um, just destroyed uh, about six MKTs mobile kitchen trailers uh, destroyed all the food and our cooks had a hard time you know but they they fought through it set all those trailers back up enough to get the stoves working grab new food and got chow out to the soldiers but it was a big problem uh, that we had to go through with that all right precipitation is the next one so what can that do to your operation all right we're talking about rain snow hail sleet, freezing rain that comes in, all right? Other than just get your wet weather gear, please don't use that as your what's my so what on the weather, right? You should always have your wet weather gear, all right? But we're talking about what does that do then to the terrain, right? So heavy heavy rains can come in and completely destroy the trafficability, all right? What was just nice packed dirt suddenly turns into thick, sticky clay that slows down your vehicles, or potentially gets them stuck and you got to get records to bring them out. All right. Same thing if we put in a large layer of snow, just imagine trying to walk through that. Look at the picture here about the football game. You know, does that have an impact on play? Yes. All right. If you're out there trying to maneuver through the battlefield and you're trudging through ankle deep snow or even worse, that could be a problem. All right. It also throws off your visibility. Things start to fog up on you while you're out in the colder weather. All right. Or even if it's just raining, it could be hot out, but the humidity from the precipitation is is throwing off um, things on you. You're getting water drops all over your optics. Um, logistics routes, it's a huge suck on morale if you're out there in uh, the bad weather. Um, intermittent streams, they might be dry when you come through uh, and it hasn't rained in a while. And then the, when the rains come, those things can overflow. 
and you got to know the region that you're in. So if you're in somewhere like around West Point, it's probably going to be within, you know, the day that it rained, maybe the next day, those streams are going to start to swell. But if you get out into some of the desert areas or places where you've got large mountains with large valleys, you know, that's that those are huge catch basins. It can take a while for even small amounts of rain to filter down from the mountains. And sometimes you could have rain, not even on you, but it comes down on the mountains that are close by to you. And about three or four days later, where it was completely dry, you know, wadis, dried riverbeds before can completely swell up enough to move Bradley tanks out of the way. Um, you know, rushing streams and, and raging rapids all of a sudden that weren't there before. So that happens. You got to be aware of what's going on with the precipitation situation. All right, cloud cover. All right. That can limit your ability to use illumination, right? Whether you're popping flares or you're calling in indirect fire uh, illume rounds, uh, if there's cloud cover in a way, those illume might be on the other side of the cloud and they're not doing you much good. Um, it can also impact then just to straighten the illumination from the moon. So you look at your light weather data, which we'll talk about, and that says you're supposed to have 100% illume, the moon is full, and then there's just big, huge black clouds that come in and you don't have the advantage of that moonlight to help you out. Uh, during the daytime, you kind of get the same thing. It changes the way the shadows function and how much visibility you have from light if you're bringing in lots of cloud cover. Um, can greatly affect the signatures that come off of targets. All right, if you've got cloud cover out there and uh, not that, but cloud cover also impacts the sound. If you've got low enough clouds and they're thick enough, sound will carry different over distances and uh, you'll, you'll hear things further away than, than you're used to. Um, clouds can impact some of our target acquisition systems. We've got a lot of different high-tech systems out there that work on electronics and the different uh, radio and electromagnetic waves they're putting out will propagate different with clouds and that can then impact the signals you get back and how well your equipment works to give you target acquisition. Um, we've talked about aviation operations that they hugely depend on weather. And cloud cover can shut them down to um, maybe they're able to fly, but they're not going to be able to see you on the ground to provide you support or to hit any targets. Um, and if obviously if cloud cover comes low enough all the way to the ground, we call that fog. And that can have a huge impact uh, on your operations, too, as you're trying to move in that. It'll really slow down your movement along with your visibility at seeing targets. And next, we can talk about temperature and humidity. I hope you're all familiar with this from being out during the summers here at uh, Camp Buckner. Um, so that can really affect your effectiveness of your troops and your equipment. If it's way too hot uh, and the wet bulb temperatures are way up there, um, that can give you problems, uh, slows down your troops, creates extra logistics as you have to bring in more water for them to drink. Uh, and then that also throws off your timing because you don't wanna be working in the middle of the hottest part of the day. Um, and then you start avoiding that. You gotta think about it in the time of your operations. On the flip side, it can just be too cold. Right? It can be too cold, it can be too dry. Right, When that happens, you start running into problems with frostbite. Uh, soldiers will bundle up with way too much clothing and then they get moving and then they overheat and you have heat casualties in the middle of the winter. Um, if you're in the defense and you're sitting there, um, it goes along with the wind. So now we go back to wind. We, if we got cold weather, high wind and low humidity, potentially you get soldiers getting uh, not just the frostbite, but they, you know, if, if we don't get that bad, you can get cracking on the skin, their lips get all dried out. If they're not using enough chapstick, um, your knuckles actually start to crack. You won't even feel it. Soldiers will look down and all of your knuckles will just be open, open wounds with blood oozing. It usually doesn't flow too well from that. Um, temperature can have effects on our smart weapons. Um, you know, some of those get, you know, a little tweaky if it's too humid out or if it's outside of their temperature ranges for operation, uh, as well as thermal sites. You know, they might work better if you've got good contrast against a cold background with a hot engine. They might work not as good um, if the temperatures start to get what you're looking at and the background temperatures start to be the same thing, um, then your thermal sites won't work as well. Um, and then obviously to mitigate all this, you got to start thinking about your uniform and your load, that you're wearing an appropriate uniform that matches the weather and, and the activity that you're doing. Right? Like I said, you can't bundle up too much if it's cold out and you don't want to strip off too uh, too much clothing and they not have what you need and then what load are those soldiers carrying while they're trying to move around in those temperatures and can they manage it all right so in those in review just make sure you know what the five military aspects of weather are wind precipitation cloud cover temperature humidity and then visibility which impacts from all of those um, and that you can use those five things to assess 
what is going on with the weather. All right. I um, hope you found this a little bit informative, made you think, and we'll see you in class.